the uh, collection that I've accumulated over the years of original uh, glass plate negatives um, covers all over the country uh, with a lot of concentration. Most of the photographers are of the New England area. However, over the years, a lot of people, because of my connection to the city of Dover, assume that everything is about Dover. So the idea of this exhibit uh, is to broaden that uh, collection so that people realize that this is a collection of images representing uh, life on the beach in the early uh, 1900s, transportation during that period, how portraits were done both in the studio using skylight windows but also out on the family farm with the kids sitting on a horse. It does include uh, a few scenes in Portsmouth and Rochester and Dover which most people are familiar with as far as my collection but we broaden that by trying to expand it. We have a lovely display of hunting and fishing and camping. Uh, transportation includes early automobiles, uh, trolley cars, uh, horse and buggy. Uh, on the beach, even has lifeguard saving uh, crew down on Rye Beach. Uh, there's some early hotels, the old Appledore Hotel out at the Isle of Shoals, the original Farragut Hotel down at Rye. This is a, a really fun photo. Is a nice early Ford sitting here on Central Avenue on the bridge. We got three gentlemen in three-piece suits wearing vests and hats and dressed to kill. Probably just came out of the bank and you don't realize it until you really take a few minutes to look at the photo and there's two deer strapped to the fender of this car. So obviously these guys didn't just come out of the woods with this deer. And if you look even closer, you'll see the license plate is Massachusetts. So these characters came out on their lunch hour from the bank and thought it would be cool to pose with the two deer on the thing and they had the photographer take a picture of them. And that's right on Central Avenue. It takes you back to time when uh, photographers really had to know what they were doing. This was done on glass. Uh, you basically got one shot. They would have to set up a large camera on a tripod. Uh, people would have to pose and in most cases, especially early on, had to basically be motionless and the photographer would make the exposure. And they didn't have light meters, they didn't have instantaneous shutters. Everything was done from experience. And these guys would then have to go and develop the plate. You had a glass negative. This collection represents dry plate, which came out in 1880. And these are plates that were pre-coated with emulsions in a factory and you would buy a box. As a photographer, you could, just like buying film, you would go into the dark room, you would load your holders, you'd go out into the field, you'd take the picture, and you could then wait until you got back to the dark room. Whereas Matthew Brady, during the Civil War, had to carry chemicals, had to coat his emulsions at the time of the exposure, and immediately develop them. Uh, I did, uh, in, uh, did include a little bit of Dover. Uh, most of the Dover, a lot of the Dover stuff people have seen, so I didn't want to spend a lot of time on Dover. But I tried to pick a few that I thought were really pretty interesting. And I mentioned earlier about the photographer sitting up on the top of the chimney. And he literally did, with a five by seven glass plate camera, he sits on the top of the higher, the taller of the two. Now, if you look today, there's only one chimney, but there originally were two chimneys or smokestacks. So he's sitting on the top of this chimney, looking down onto the Central Avenue Bridge. And this is the photograph. And this is actually the roof of the mill and this is right after the 1896 flood, when the Bracewell building that used to extend across the bridge was taken away. This is the rebuild, the reconstruction of the dam. And so he climbed to the top. And while he was up there, he did other shots as well. There's some photos looking into the courtyard of the mill. During the 100th uh, year flood, a few years back, I stood up on the roof of that, on the edge of the mill, looking down on the river, and that was scary enough, never mind climbing to the top of the chimney. But anyways, I kind of reproduced that shot when the water was coming right up against the bridge. But that's a pretty interesting, and this photograph is the mill when it used to come all the way up central, uh, wrap around and went down Washington Street as one, uh, one complex. So there's a few 1940s and some early. Uh, there is a photograph of uh, Dover's first uh, photography studio on Orchard Street, a Bingham studio, and it has a skylight um, uh, window. There's a couple of fire pictures, uh, Robin's Auto Fire, the 1968 when the Bracewell block burned. Um, this uh, photo uh, is the King Block right on the corner of Orchard and Central. That uh, building burned uh, also in the late 60s, but it was up here. Uh, you can see a skylight uh, window. That is uh, Bingham Studio. That was one of Dover's first photography studios. That area now, of course, is a parking lot. So 
piece of history saved. Uh, what I did in the exhibit is I broke it into categories, uh, travel, camping, uh, at the beach, transportation. Uh, this section here is travel, and it includes, as I, I mentioned previously, the early Plymouth Rock. This canopy was built in 1867. Uh, many of you know the story of the rock, of course, broke in half and then people were chipping away souvenirs and the rock was slowly disappearing. So they finally decided to move it, place it, and they built this lovely canopy over it and here's one of the Fall River Line steamers behind it. Uh, so that is a real, and that's all changed now, that's all gone, so that's a nice piece of history. The original mount up at Lake Winnipesaukee that unfortunately burned at the weirs and sits at the bottom of the lake. Uh, the original clam shacks down at Newburyport at Joppa Flats. Uh, the Armenia White, which was one of the fastest steamers on Lake Sunapee, and she sunk. Uh, she's at the bottom of the lake, and there's a lovely photo of her steaming along. Uh, many of you remember going up to uh, Wiscasset, Maine, with the old ruins, the Hesper and stuff. There's a photograph when the rigging was still intact. Uh, the old information uh, center at the Kittery as you crossed over the bridge. Fort McCleary in Kittery still has a lot of the buildings there intact, which are now gone. Appledore House at the Isle of Shoals, which burned, along with Celia Thaxter's cottage. Uh, this is a very early, early photo of a gunkwit uh, when it was a fishing colony prior to the uh, artist colony, and that's a, a really somewhat rare photo, I think. There's not a lot of that era. Uh, 1939 World's Fair. Uh, Rochester Fair has been in the news lately, and here's an original photo of the old Cold Spring Park when it was uh, the old fairground. That's the entrance you use today, but that's the original old gate uh, with a cattle barn in the background. Fortunately, a lot of negatives early on went to landfills because nobody wanted the, the weight, the burden the, 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 to deal with them. They would throw them away. And a lot of times when a photographer would die, the family would just get rid of them. They didn't know what to do with them. And you hear the stories about some of Matthew Brady's Civil War photos, you know, that were turned into a greenhouse, you know, that some of that's true, but they would literally, and there were some negatives here locally that uh, went to a local orphanage and the kids would scrape the emulsion off and paint pictures on the glass. They would recycle the glass. So had we not done this, um, a lot of these images that we're now seeing around and images that I have here would not exist.